Welcome back. So if you saw my last video, then you'll know that in that video, I was finally able to use my new to me Brown and Sharp milling machine for the very first time. And if you saw that video, then you'll also know that it was fantastic. This is a very nice machine. It's got all sorts of great features like power feeds in all the axes, a fully geared head, and it's just a lot of fun to use which got me thinking I would really like to use it a lot more. As a matter of fact, I would like to make this machine my daily driver. However, before I'm ready to do that, there are still a couple of things that I would like to do to the machine. First and foremost among them is I would like to bring it into the 21st century by installing a DRO. Now, installing a DRO on most modern machines is a relatively straightforward thing to do. However, this machine was designed long before DROs were even a consideration, which means we're going to need to get a little bit creative on this one. The DRO that I'm going to be using for this project is just another one of those typical import DROs, very similar to the DRO that I installed on my lathe just a few videos ago. For that reason, I'm not really going to spend a lot of time going over the unit itself in this video. So if you are interested in a bit more information about these import DROs, stuff like what comes in the box and what to expect when it arrives, you can check out that video for a bit more of that information. I do, however, have a very important and I think somewhat exciting announcement to make before we get started, and that is the availability of merch. In case you haven't noticed, yes, I am all decked out in my own logo, which might be a little bit pretentious. However, over the last couple of months, there have been a few people who have reached out asking about the t-shirts that you see me wearing in a lot of my videos. Up to this point, my answer has always been, I'm working on it, and I have been working on it. This stuff has been surprisingly more difficult and complicated to get all prepped and ready for sale than I would have imagined. However, it is finally ready, and by the time this video goes live, the store should be live as well. Hopefully, you are already seeing links to this stuff somewhere below the video. However, just in case you're not, I will put a link in the description and I will post something about it to Patreon as well. And now, finally, with all that out of the way, let's go take a look at the milling machine and see what we're up against. All right, so let's just jump right into it because I'm still not sure how I'm gonna do this and we really need to get moving. What you're looking at here is the Y axis. Of course, the table moves back and forth in this direction on this dovetail. And I think you can probably see my problem. There are just no flat surfaces and no space to mount a DRO. So this is the left-hand side of the machine. And as you can see, the right hand side isn't a whole lot better. I do have some surfaces that I might be able to work with here. For example, this little box and this sort of flat area back here on the casting. However, I have to be really careful where I drill because this box has all the components that controls the power feeds for both the Y and the Z axis. And then there's this shaft that runs back through the entire casting and comes out the back here that controls the power feed disengage trip for the Z axis. So I'm going to have to be really careful where I drill and get really creative with the mounting here. I've been staring at this for a little over an hour, so let me just show you what I'm thinking and we can go from there. All right, so here is the scale for the Y axis and pretty much I'm thinking that somewhere in this area is really my only option. I can mount the scale here and then hopefully I can drop down from this casting here and attach to the reader somehow. The other thing that I have to consider, of course, is my travel, which is another reason why I think that this is pretty much the only option. The scale, of course, mounted here and the reader tied in somewhere in this section gives me just enough room to accommodate full travel in the Y axis for both the reader and the table. In order to mount the scale itself, I have this piece of angle iron, and ideally I would really like to use this existing screw here to attach the angle iron to the box and avoid drilling any unnecessary additional holes in this box. However, if I do that, that starts to put my angle iron so far up this surface that I'm almost starting to get into this curve. 
So I'm not sure how well this is gonna work out, but that is what I'm gonna try first. And I'm just gonna see if I can sneak in maybe two screws down in this bottom corner here. All right, so we're pretty much gonna be winging it this entire project and just solving one problem at a time as they come up. So to get started, I'm just marking out where I want this initial hole to be to tie into that existing fastener in the side of that box on the mill. So I'm gonna start off by drilling that hole and then I can work outwards from there using it as sort of my reference location. For the two holes that I'm gonna put down the other end, the exact location isn't super critical. I just know that I want them down about as low as I can get them on the angle iron so that I can tie into that relatively flat surface on the milling machine. Now that I have all of my mounting holes drilled, I can start mocking things up and transferring the two holes down the far end to the surface on the milling machine so that I can drill and tap for the fasteners I'll be using to attach it. So let's do a little test fit of this bracket and see what it looks like. Well, that's not completely awful, I guess. It's way more rigid than it looks. It's not going anywhere. So I guess that'll work. It's gonna have to anyway. So next I need to get the scale aligned. To do that, I will temporarily clamp it in place with these and then put an indicator on it to make sure that it's aligned this way. And I'll just use washers to move either end up or down to align it in that direction. From here, I'll just run the indicator back and forth and then loosen up one of those clamps at either end of the bracket, make small adjustments, rinse, repeat, until I get a decent reading that's within one or two thou across the entire length of travel. Once it looks good enough, I can then mark out the locations of my mounting holes right there with everything still firmly clamped in place. And then it's removed the entire thing one more time so that I can drill and tap those mounting holes that we just marked out. And now is the moment of truth. Time to put everything together, get the scale mounted and trammed in. All right, so I've got the scale for the Y axis mounted. I did go ahead and tram it in off camera 
you know, it's just a bunch of back and forth with the indicator, so I didn't bother showing it, but I did get it trammed in left and right, and I got it trammed in up and down as well. I don't know if you can see it, but there are actually a couple of washers stacked up underneath of this side here. Honestly, this is not my best work. I think that it probably looks passable on camera, but I don't know. I think at some point in the future, I may come back and just redo this entire situation. But for now, I do think that it's going to work. Um, it just, it doesn't look nice. It's not very clean. You know, I'm not super proud of it, but I think it's gonna work just fine. So with that being done, the next thing that I need to do is I need to mount the bracket that is going to tie the reader to the saddle. And for that, I'm thinking that I can tie into this flat spot right up under here. As usual, I am going to have to be careful because on the other side of this surface that I'll be drilling into is the T-slot where the automatic stops for my Y-axis run. I'm going to speed through this section a bit because it's just more drilling and tapping holes, which we've already done a bunch of. And I'm just using one of the brackets that came with the DRO kit. And I cut it down in the bandsaw so that it would fit up underneath of this little ledge here. Okay, so this one gets us connected to the saddle. And it gives me a place to connect my next piece. And from there, I guess I just build these things out like Legos until I can reach the reader on the bottom there. And there it is, the Y-axis is finally mounted. Holy smokes, I cannot believe we are just getting the first scale on the first axis done. This has been challenging thus far. All right, you are looking at the back of the mill table, which is fortunately flat, one of the only flat surfaces on this machine. So that is thankfully going to make at least getting the scale for this axis mounted a little bit more straightforward than the last one. So what I'm thinking is I just center it up in the middle of the table and then I'll line up with this bottom edge of the table then drill, tap my holes and the scale for this axis will be done. So this is at least gonna be a bit more straightforward and will be a little bit of a reprieve from the craziness of the last one. Tying in the reader, however, is going to be a bit more complicated. I'm going to have to tie into this surface down here somehow, and there's you know, nothing really flat on this surface. I don't know, like I said, one problem at a time. We will deal with this one when we come to it. So first up, I will get this scale mounted. Positioning the scale is pretty straightforward. I just measure the scale, mark the center point, and then I did the same thing for the table, and then just lined up those two marks to center the scale on the table. And because my robotic third arm is still held up in customs, I'm just using a bunch of clamps to help me hold on to everything while I transfer the position of my mounting holes. All right, so the scale is mounted. That was the easy part. Now I have to tie in the reader. Here's basically what I'm thinking is something like this. This casting right here is actually an oil reservoir. You can see there's a fill plug right here. So I wanna be really careful that I don't drill through this thing completely. I have this little feature right here. It's like this round lump. Um, I'm thinking that I can drill and tap in either of these raised edges of this lump and mount right to that and then just mount to my reader. 
I'm gonna have to make some modifications to this bracket to make that work. I'm gonna have to drill some holes that are gonna land on this lump and also the slots that are in the top of this, uh, I'm going to need to bring those back further in this direction towards the casting so that I can actually reach the screws on the bottom of the reader. And then I'll just, whatever's left here, I'll just cut off. And again, this is just more drilling and tapping holes, so we won't spend a bunch of time on this. I did end up breaking off a tap, which is still buried in my milling machine. Let's just say that's what happens when you are still out in the shop long past the time when you should have gone to bed. If you're tired, put your tools down and go to bed. It's just not worth the mistakes that you will inevitably make. Well, there is one more down, which means we've got one more to go. And that is, of course, going to be the Z-axis. What you're looking at here is, of course, the dovetail for the Z-axis. And I have the knee pushed all the way down as far as it'll go. My general plan for the Z-axis is very similar to Y. I'll use a piece of angle iron to mount the scale. I have this cover plate here, which is relatively flat, so I'll mount directly to that. And I have these existing fasteners that bolt the cover plate on. I'm gonna use these to mount the angle iron so that I don't have to drill any additional holes in the mill. And then I have this little sliver of machined surface on the back of the knee, which I can use to mount the bracket to tie the reader to the movement of the knee. Adding the mounting holes for the Z axis is very similar to how I did it for Y. I'll start off by marking the location of the first hole by I, and then I measured the distance between the two holes, and I know that my second location is eight and a quarter inches away. I'll start off by drilling two three-eighths holes, and then I'll come back with a seven-sixteenths end mill and widen them out into slots to allow for a little adjustment. Okay, so I've been sitting here looking at this thing, and of course it's not going to just work. I don't know why I thought that it would. Um, but the problem is, so this bracket is going to attach to these holes on the side of the reader, like this. Okay, you get the gist of that. So if I have my scale mounted to the angle iron, and I want to tie in to these holes on this side, well, this little wing isn't long enough to reach in here, so that I can tie on to the knee. So then if I wanna push the entire scale out in this direction so that I can connect to this other side, well, my angle iron doesn't let me get far enough out this way. 
So the long and the short of it is, I'm gonna to need to put some kind of spacer in between the angle iron and the milling machine so that the angle iron can sit further out in this direction so that I can squeeze that bracket in and tie it into the inside face of the reader. All right, here's what I did to offset the bracket. I just snuck in a couple of nuts and a washer. Um, thankfully, I had these longer socket head cap screws. These really saved the day because uh, without them, I probably would have been taking a ride to Lowe's. I also popped in the holes for the mounting screws to mount the scale to the bracket. It's just the same exact thing that I did for the Y axis, so I figured you didn't need to watch me do that again. Which means the last thing that needs to be done is I need to drill and tap the holes for the reader bracket. All right, and there it is, the Z scale is tied in, everything is mounted, finally all three scales are done. However, we still have one more thing left to do. And that is of course to mount the bracket for the actual DRO unit. I am going to keep it as simple as possible for this one, so I'm just gonna pop in a couple of tapped holes right here and get it mounted right to the side of this cover plate and be done with it. Well, I certainly don't mind admitting that I am very glad that that is finished. You know, it's not often that a project really just wears me down, but this one definitely did. It just felt like it was going to go on forever, <laughs> like it was never going to end. Everything seemed to be more complicated than it needed to be, and nothing just went together smooth without any issues. It felt like at every step of the way, I was having to improvise and solve some new problem, and standing here at the end of it quite honestly I just feel mentally and physically beat up that being said it was definitely worth every second of it I'm very glad that I did it and I'm very glad that it's done having a DRO on that mill is going to be really really nice if you've ever used a milling machine with and without a DRO then you'll know what a big difference it makes so yeah I mean worth every second glad I did it but for some reason this one was tough I do still have a couple of things I need to do quite honestly <laughs> I haven't even finished getting all the scales trammed in. Uh, the DRO is not even programmed. It's still reading in metric. But, you know, everything turned on. All the scales are working. Everything's mounted. So the stuff that needs to be done from here is just getting everything tuned in and taking care of the details, really. And that's all stuff I can do on another day. I am just happy that it is all mounted and working. 
And with that, I am ready to go inside and get some sleep and some much needed rest. As usual, if you have made it this far into the video, thank you so very much. I do truly appreciate each and every person who watches, and especially when you watch this far into the video, it lets the algorithm know that you enjoyed it, which means it'll be shared with more people. So thank you. And of course, an extra special thank you to my patrons. You guys find value in what I do, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that. So thank you very, very much. If you are already a subscriber, thank you for that as well. If you're not a subscriber, but you like what I do here and you feel like I've earned it, give me a like and a subscribe. If you feel like I haven't, let me know what I can do better in the comments down below. And as always, until next time, get out there, make something awesome. Most importantly, have some fun, and I hope to see you all again very, very soon.